SMT Nation, thanks for tuning into this uh, edition of the channel. We're going to take a look at a trip that I just took. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a rundown of like the testing scenario, the time of the day, all the details of the trip itself. And then I'm going to give you guys some results from each of the big three, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon. I'll give you guys the strengths, the weaknesses, what I saw, my experiences, and what this all means for their network build in this segment of Ohio, all right? This is a completely regional localized Ohio test, all right? So we're talking about the outer region of Cleveland, Ohio. This is PA 14, all right? And it's it's a, it's a major market, relatively speaking. You've got a county here that serves somewhere in the area of like 4 million people, all right? So there are a lot of people here within this uh, populated county. But as you get out of this county, things get more sparse. It's it's like typical Midwestern, you know, part of the, the country. And there's a bunch of nice little small towns, quiet towns, you know, nothing like Cleveland per se, uh, but, you know, very suburban. Uh, so my trip started in this area right outside of Parma. And then we took um, the freeway, which is 480 to Interstate 80, the turnpike, down to the Boardman Youngstown area. And I'm going to show you guys how the carriers did on this trip while mostly spending time on the freeway itself. Kind of interesting. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen the video, uh, we actually talked about this, me and Dennis, on his podcast. Uh, he took a trip from Pittsburgh through Boardman all the way up to like this area here, just west of here. So he cut across this exact route. He did a little bit more driving than me. Uh, but this is a, pretty much the same route using 80. And my results were very different. Like, really really different. I'm going to show you guys all my data points. I'm going to show you all the performances. Uh, what is the date? Uh, it is July 7th. So this is a Thursday, late morning, early afternoon testing. All right. And I drove it with all three carriers and, and they did fine. <laughs> I didn't have any problems with any of them just to kind of play spoiler there. But let me show you guys some details here. Okay. T-Mobile was on the magenta, uh, the Los Magenta. That's Magenta Max. Uh, their highest plan, AT and T Los Blue. All right, that's the um, the Death Star. We that's the highest. That's the Elite plan. And then uh, Verizon QCI eight postpaid. All right. So and I used my personal line. I didn't even use uh, you know the Los Red, which you know is like business and get more whatever it is. Okay. So uh, let me show you guys how the carriers did. All right. Starting first, this is AT&T. All right, this is an iPhone 13 Pro. These are all the data points. Let's just look at the general results here. All right, you will see that the trip kind of started at 10.58 a.m. And uh, it actually ran through about noon. So that's going from the Cleveland area over to Youngstown area. And you'll see I try to take as many tests as possible, especially when I felt like, you know, changing cells. Uh, you know, you're going about 70, 75 miles per hour in the turnpike. So you're probably changing cells every few miles, right? Depending on how developed the city is. When you start to get out on the turnpike, sometimes the tower sites are a little bit more spread. Uh, but the more populated areas do have more tower sites. So it, you kind of, you, you might hand off sooner than you think. But let's just look at the technologies and the range. Starting first with the technologies. I would say that 90% of the sites that I connected to on this trip were either 5G DSS, low band 5G, or excuse me, N2 DSS 5G, that's band 2, PCS 1900, uh, or they were LTE. The only time I really connected to 5G plus was early in the testing, early in the beginning near the town. So what I did was I took that out because it wasn't reflective of the trip itself. It's just where I kind of the origins of the test. So I took that out. Most of the time, guys, I was connected to LTE, and the DSS is essentially LTE. Here's your downlink range. Uh, we've got speeds in the low end of 4.7 downlink, 11.7, 11.4. Those are kind of the lows. Not the end of the world. They're not great, but they're not the end of the world. Your your video consumption, uh, your music playing, you know, GPS, none of that's going to be impacted by that downlink. The rest of them, I mean, if you look at it, 58, 20, 56. 35 most of the time and here's a 166 here at the bottom most of the time you're over 25 megabits what in the world would you be doing 
you know, <laughs> that needs more than 25 megabits. Even a 4K video could play. And if you're on an iPhone, you're on 1080p anyways. All right. So I, I don't have anything to complain, really, except for a couple of downlink speed tests, right? 4.7. That's a little concerning. 4.5 here. And that's on 5G DSS. If it was on regular LTE, something tells me it may not have been that low. All right. Now, the uplink leaves much more to be desired. 2.8 megabits per second. 1.2 megabits per second, 2.4, right? There are some really low numbers there. Some of them are good. Here's 23.2, all right? Here's 13.6. Those are much more acceptable, all right? I, I'm i okay, you know? <laughs> I'm okay with those things, but those lower ones can be touch and go. For example, the 1.54 megabits, the 1.29 megabits. If you were to accidentally start a video call on that it might not work well you would probably wait to get a better service area that i don't know if this is you know weak signal or what but uh yeah yeah that's not going to be fun okay all right here's the next round of testing some more data points this is still at&t 11 30 a.m to 11 53 a.m so you got all these tests all right you've got downlinks ranging uh they're actually a little bit better in this testing uh you'll see a low of about 10.6 on the downlink and then highs pushing 200 right, as we get closer to the, you know, to the destination. So the, this is a much better uh, round of testing. Uh, you don't have the lows, right? So all your video, everything you want to do on downlink is probably perfectly fine. Uplink, also much better, right? You still do have a couple of crappy ones here in the first half of this. 0 0.7, that's awful. You might drop a video call there. 1.72 is pretty bad. 0 0.9 is awful. But you get some 44s, you got some 22s, you got a 49.9. Very much so a mixed bag. This must be a weak area for them. The tower spacing must be pretty poor because if you look, the downlink is weak as well as the uplink. So it's not that they're congested in these tests. These are instances where the signal is dipping, the towers are spaced out kind of far, and that's the kind of results you're going to get. And here is the last round of testing as we got closer to like getting off the freeway these last couple of tests here. All right, 92 down, 30 down, 62 down, 26 down, 9 down. These are the types of tests you're going to get when you're getting off, you know, back onto the beaten path. Look at the uplink. You know, it accelerated a lot. 27, 24, 15, 8, 30. Much better. All right, so uh, look, my overall evaluation of AT&T is pretty good. I mean, a couple of tough spots there when your, your downlink gets a little slow. But your uplink really is the concern there. That's my only real concern, generally speaking, about AT&T in this testing. Now, had I been an LTE only, since I wasn't really finding 5G+, plus, maybe it would have been a different story. Maybe. Maybe that's something I'll test in a future date. All right, now it's for Verizon. All right, these are screenshots that I captured from my Google Pixel 6 Pro. All right, let's see how Verizon did. All right, so you'll see here testing starting around 11 a.m., all right, 336 down, 56 up. This is where it's connected to 5G Ultra Wideband. The site was right off the freeway. All right, so kind of like when we first got onto the, the turnpike. Uh, so they actually have a 5G Ultra Wideband site. That was one of the first sites I tested, actually, when I first started testing the C-band. All right, N77 test there. Uh, here's one. It handed off to the next site, 266 down, 23 up. All right, so Ultra Wideband present. Look at all these other tests here. 262 by 30, 285 by 26. Those are ultra wideband tests too. 269 by 5. Not as good on the uplink, but the downlink, great. All right, anywhere you see those types of numbers, that's the 5G ultra wideband testing. All right, the LTE, you guys will see there on the left, the technology is being utilized. I would say I was connected to 5G ultra wideband 40% of the trip. Like if I look at just the space that it covered, 35 to 40% of the actual miles covered had Verizon's 5G ultra wideband. All right. It's it's July. All right. They've been building this out just for a handful of months. To me, I think that's okay. Uh what are my concerns here about Verizon? Uh here's 11.8 downlink. Uh that's probably really the only one that you'd say is kind of low. Uh the uplink test, here's one of five and a half. Here's one of five point three. Here's one two point two five. That's probably the only one I'd be concerned with, maybe, you know, losing a FaceTime call or a video call or a duo call. The other ones are all pretty good. 
I'm not as concerned about congestion. I, in fact, I don't see congestion in any of these sites. These other tests may just be on like, like say for example, uh, let's let's find a low one here, twenty six point eight down, thirty three up. That one's probably got some traffic on it. You can see the downlink much lower than the uplink. So that one maybe. This one here, that could be congestion, but that could be just an edge cell where you're getting twelve down and five up, maybe. This one is a weak signal. 269 down, five up. So you're on ultra wideband, and, and that's the type of speed you get when you're on edge cell. Here's one, the 5G test, 41 by 7. That one, I don't see the congestion in these tests. You guys tell me what you think. The 155 by 2, eh, that's a that's an ultra wideband test that's on edge cell. You get what I'm saying? I, I just don't see congestion in these tests. All right, let's go to the next data set. Verizon, 1148 to 1204. All right, let's see what we have. Any concerns on the low side? Here's 14. Here's 11. I don't have any concerns. I really don't. I didn't have concerns with AT&T when they were around here. I don't have concerns about Verizon when I'm there. You're just, you could still do your 1080p video. Your show would go on uninterrupted if you're watching uh, you know, something. Um, I don't have any concerns there. 4K, yeah, you want to get over like 25 megabits. You'll see most of those. Look at the rest. Look at these tests. 385, that's an ultra wideband test. 19 up. All right, 136, 153. Those are actually, I think those are uh, ultra wideband tests, but they're approaching edge cell, right? 153 by 2. All right, uplink wise, uh, here's a 0 0.32. All right, so this looks like a 5G DSS. 11 down, 0 0.32 up. That's bad. If you are on a video call, you're probably going to drop it at 0.32, or at least you're going to get like buffering or breaking up or some. It just depends, you know, how how fast you're able to get closer to the cell. That's a concern. Uh, 4.34, you're getting close. Here's a 2.75, you're getting close, right? You could have some troubles there. Again, Verizon not perfect. You could see that tower density is important, and I think that's what's happening here. I don't see congestion on these tests maybe this one maybe this lte one where it's 14 down nine up maybe a little bit congestion i don't see it and again we've got a couple of ultra wideband tests here in fact those first handful of tests on the ultra wideband connection all right let's go to the next one all right and um here's another this is a um, verizon test this this is from 11 19 a.m to 11 46 a.m let's see if we have any issues here Downlink at 37, 0 0.81 uplink. This is bad, right? You're probably on edge cell for LTE here. The downlink's okay. The uplink is really bad. You're, like I said, you're not gonna get, you're gonna have some trouble with your, um, with your video calls. Here's a major one. This, this was, I think, the worst test, or maybe second worst. I don't know. It depends how you look at it. LTE, they got 40 down and they got zero up. That's not gonna get it done. That is a huge problem area, probably a dead spot. You know, enough to work for downlink, but there's nothing there on the uplink. So that is horrible. That's arguably the worst test, I think, of all the testing, right? Uh, let's see. Any downlink concerns? Here's a 1.94 LTE and a 0 0.76 LTE. That's going to be just a kind of like a dead zone. If you're on a call or, or if you're texting, these things won't be issues, but this is going to buffer video. Anything outside of like 360p. <laughs> so you're going to get buffering TV here. Uh, you'll get a video call probably dropping or struggling. Uh, let's see here. Anything else of concern? The rest of it seems fine. Okay, we went over the one with a zero. Uh, but you got a mix of 5G. Here's an ultra wideband test. 286 by 15. Let's see. Here's a DSS test. 96 by 3. Here's a 5G ultra wideband. No, this is probably a DSS test. 168 by 45. 274 by 7. So you got some tests where I'm probably kind of far from the site, but it's still working pretty good. All right. There you go. That's Verizon for you. And I think this is the last one. This So this is as we're getting off the freeway. Okay. Uh, do we have any ultra wideband here? I think possibly two of the first two might be just far from the site. 159 down, 20 up. 144 down, 9 up. Uh, these are good. Uh, the uplink's not great. Downlinks are fine, acceptable. Uplink, not great. Verizon, flawed. Nothing perfect about their testing. But it's not congested. 
you would not characterize that driving as congested. That's just not the case. Uh, I, I, I do not think it was congested at all. Maybe momentarily you can make the argument. All right, now let me show you guys some of the T-Mobile testing. All right, and the reason why I want to show you guys this is because, especially for people that have taken this route before and driven this, I don't know if this was just today, but T-Mobile's uplink was an absolute nightmare the whole trip, and the latency wasn't very good. I didn't have any problems with the downlink. Let me show you guys. Just look at the timestamps here. All right, 1252. Okay, you're going to see a ton of pictures. All right, 314 down, 0 0.23 up. Here's an error where the test failed. 525 by 21, that's wonderful. 30 ping, 5 jitter. This is a great test. I have no qualms with that. You're going to get 4K video. Your uplink is plenty. No issues on that test. But that was the anomaly. Here's a 5G UC test, 36 by 11. Here's 58 by 17 on low band 5G. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. Plenty good. 683 by 26. That's a good 5G UC. All right, here's a 5G UC on edge cell. 8 down, 0 0.79 up. You're in trouble with this uplink if you were trying to do a video call. I can tell you from experience. You know, if you're live streaming and you're in any of these like handoffs, you're going to be in trouble. Same thing with Verizon. Same thing with AT&T. When that uplink drops and dips, you're going to lose connectivity, all right? 44 by 8 on the low band. I'm good with both of those results. I have no problem with that. Ping's a little high. All right, 38 down, 4 up on low band. I'm okay with that. I, I think that's perfectly fine, especially if you're going to be, you know, handing off to another cell. Here is a, I don't know what happened. It was literally flashing between LTE, 5G, 5G UC. It was going in and out of all those connections. 64 ping, 23 jitter, 0 0.91 down, 0 0.24 up. Both of these are unacceptable. I don't know exactly what was going on, but it was switching modes. That was a really weird area. LTE, 5G, 5G UC, back to 5G, back to LTE. It did that for like two or three miles. All right, took these tests again. Here's 146 by 14. That's a good LTE test. That's really good. Surprised that T-Mobile was doing that there. Uh, 34 by 3 on 5G UC, another problem for them. There's a lot, I, maybe on edge cell, possibly, maybe. 213 by 15, plenty good, but uh, not great for 5G UC, the N41. All right, here's a decent downlink, 403, but the uplink, again, it's very low at 4.7. I'm starting to think that there's a trend here. I think it's the tower density. The, the towers are so far apart. And they can't go full power with these sites, possibly. It's impacting the uplink. Look, 16, 617 down is a lot. 7.9 up, which is very meager. 628 by 5 on the 5G UC. Guys, look at the timing on these. Every two minutes. Every minute. Look, 124, 125. What? <laughs> I'm taking a lot of data points. I have all these pictures. Here's... um. Here's another test on 5G UC, 334 down, 0. 0.52 up, 12 by 8 on LTE. Eh, you probably wouldn't notice any issues if you were just using your phone normally. 17 by 10 on low band, that's fine. 209 on the 5G UC, 0. 0.5 uplink. If you were on a video call during this trip, you were going to drop often. That's how many really low uplink scores I got. Now I'm getting closer to the main city. I'm getting back towards Cleveland, the origin from where we departed. 622 down, 29 up, 25 ping, one jitter. You see how it's better? The networking where I live is much better than where I went and in the in route to that place. 339 down, eight up. All right, that's probably testing on edge cell. That's actually, in my opinion, this is plenty good. It's fine. And then here's right off the freeway getting onto the city streets, 568 down, 70 up. This is this is what I'm saying to you guys. I don't know what is going on, that area, trouble with uplink or whatever, but I think, I think it's tower spacing. I think it's the density. They just simply don't have it, and their capacity layer, their N41 struggles with uplink. So here's my takeaway. Was T-Mobile unusable? No. They were perfectly usable. 
Would they have given a couple different tasks a hard time? Yeah, I think the video calls would have been trouble. You probably would not be able to live stream. It would have disconnected several times. Those would have been the hard things to do. And I don't know how many people live stream and I don't know how many people do video call. I mean, I know people do a lot of uploading to TikTok and Snapchat and those would have been problematic, especially uh, the video calling if you were doing FaceTime. AT&T was a little bit better with the uplink, but they didn't have the downlink speed, right? You guys saw. And then it's just overstated how much people think Verizon is congested. It is not the case. You guys saw all the speed tests. This was my experience on my trip on this route. This route, Boardman Youngstown to Cleveland and Cleveland to Boardman Youngstown. That was that was my experience. I wanted to share this all with you guys to show you a couple of things, how different experiences for different people and how things can be very regional. And I was I am not putting down any one carrier. I'm not trying to pick on anyone. They all had their flaws. You guys saw areas where Verizon struggled, AT&T struggled, T-Mobile struggled, and you saw their strengths too, right? You got to see it. This is clearly an objective view. Look at all these data points. Look, I I have all of this. And th this this is what I this is what I had in this testing. And I could do this 2 3 4 5 more times and we can get different data. <laughs> right? It, uh networks have bad days and maybe that's kind of something we saw in this instance. What do you guys think of the testing? What do you guys think of how I did it, how I collected it, my evaluation? Do you guys think I was hard on all of them? Was I hard enough? Should I've been harder? Was I easy on them? Should I've been harder? I don't know. Do you guys think I gave them all a fair shake? Do you guys think there's something different I could have did in the testing? Again, I wasn't pinning them up against each other. I was evaluating each one standalone. How did they hold up? In my estimation, 90% of tasks, all three were perfect. They would have they would have been fine. Uh, maybe a couple of tasks for a couple of the carriers would have been trouble. But you guys see where I stand on this. Evaluating on use cases, evaluating you know the networks objectively. That's all I try to do. What do you guys think of the testing? What do you guys think of the results? Were you shocked? Were you surprised? Uh, did, is that what you expected? Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more, and turn on the bell notifications icon so you never miss an upload and you get more videos like this. All right, links in the description box for my Twitter handle, Gmail address for all your business inquiries, and my Patreon page is linked. You guys can get early access to content and exclusive videos and live streams not found anywhere else. Thanks for watching. Check out some of these other videos here at the end, and we will see you all at the next video. Peace.